Welcome to the Bugiani Thunderbird Tournament 2010. You're looking at the U16 squad, the West Jersey Groove, and the Daiwa. They came out with their warm-ups. They had tie-dye warm-ups with peace signs on the back, and that's all right with me. I think that's pretty cool. They'll be taking on the U16 Thunderbirds, coached by Frank and Alicia Bugiani, and 16-minute halves. Same rules as basketball. You can play zone man-to-man, -man, full court press, three-point shots. There is overtime if necessary, and this is at the Castleton State College Glenbrook Gymnasium. And this is the first game of the tournament for both sides. So sit back and enjoy it. The Blue Johnny Tournament is a huge event in AAU basketball. As they wait for the T-Birds to break their huddle. And I'll tell you, it's a big roster for the Thunderbirds U16 squad. And I shall read it as the game progresses. And I'm not quite sure what they're waiting for. We speak it out starting five, okay. So for the groove in the orange uniforms, number four is Laura Flannery. Teresa Golotsky is number 11. Chelsea Landry is number 12. Leanne Griffith wears 13. Tori Cummings 15. Jesse Best number 20. Allie Ray 31. And Emma Ferraro is 33. And that's Grace Amato gonna jump center in the white. Thunderbirds in the white and the groove with the basketball. Chelsea Bagley defensively there for the Thunderbirds. She hails from Mill River Union High School. There's the ball fake, the penetration, the shot, and that was hard off the backboard. The rebound came down. The groove will control it. Three-point shot going up, and that'll run out. So I'll tell you what, neither team waiting. They're going right after each other right now, and it'll be out of bounds last touch by the groove, so it'll be taken over as Lavelle Stephen, wearing number one. She hails from Mill River, and she'll give the ball back to Chelsea Bagley. Bagley with the crossover, waits for Flint to step out. He'll play toss and catch on the elbow. See him run that baseline. The bell even came to the elbow. They want to dump the ball down inside to Amato and foul called as they rotate the ball down around inside. And that's going to be the first foul of the ball game. As I believe it's Ferraro called for the foul. So looking for the first points of the ball game from the free throw line. And Grace Amato, I believe, from Woodstock High School. Will not get that shot to cooperate with her. So on her second attempt, the clock did stop at 15.24 to go in the first half. She will, oh, I don't know how that didn't go. It's halfway down and came out on her. So Allie Ray will run the point. So Ray, number 31 in orange for the groove. And she'll snap the pass off on the elbow. Bagley got picked off on the screen. Amato with the bump, but the basket will go. And again, tacking the hole and getting that layup will make it two to nothing. The groove would lead. Lavelle Steven steps out to meet the pass. Pembroke 24 down in the low post and on the drive, Bagley no good. Rebound controlled by the groove and they're looking to get down the floor, up tempo of the game and they'll get the basket as it's number four, Flannery with the bucket. Oh, good tempo right there. I love that push the basketball up tempo style of play and the groove, like I said, with the tie-dye warm-ups and the peace sign and that shot off the mark. Lavelle Steven took it from the wing. Flint will put it up and no. See the difference already in the offensive philosophies. Perimeter shots for the Thunderbirds right there. Drives to the hole and it finishes. That's gonna be good from the left side as Landry will make the shot and make it a six nothing game. <clears throat> Thunderbirds trying to settle in here in their home tournament. U16 action, you've already seen some U14 games. And Amato up and jump ball called as the defense collapsed around her. And the indication on the arrow will be the ball will stay down this end of the floor and Flint will take the ball out of bounds number 11. Bagley with the ball fake. There's the kick out and the three point shot. Yes! All twine. Makes it a 6 3 basketball game. Again, Ray running the point. There's the crossover. Ball below the free throw line. Ball slapped around on the floor and it'll squirt free. Amato will go high to the floor, get it, and push the ball out to Flint. She'll be able to pick it up on the dribble. And yeah, she wants to bring the ball back to the center of the floor to Bagley. And so Bagley to LaBelle Steven and then the defender right there. They're gonna throw all the way back and reverse the basketball and it's stolen away. Bagley getting back in defensive position, up and got it. That was a great finish by Kolonsky. 
First of all, she was smart enough to stay to the left side and take a left-handed shot to keep the defender at bay. Amato turns, fires high off the backboard, no good. Kolodsky with the rebound, going long distance, picked off by Bagley. She'll make the steal, has her head up all the way, bring the ball down the floor, will cross over, and now find an open portion of the court right near that mid-court logo. Pembroke took the contact, made the catch, and defensively that was Flannery that the ball will stay with the Thunderbirds. As Ethier from Proctor, number 18 in the basketball game, just did a softball game where she is the first baseman for Proctor. And she made one of the plays of the game in that. It was awesome. Talk about it more as the game progresses. As Klotsky with the steal, got up in here and knocked the ball down. Klotsky's going to attack the hole, step inside the defender, and rolls it off the rim. No good. Ethier will get the rebound and then kill the dribble, bring it back to LaBelle Steven, and now Bagley can call for the ball, we'll get the ball. Eight to three, the groove with the lead, with 12.24 to go in the first half. Tipped around, and they'll get the pass up, head to Ray, slowed it down, waited for the trailer, oh, that whole side of the floor is open, a late rotation, and the basket by Landry. Uh, now it's looking for the end one on the bump, but she didn't get it. And I'll tell you, if they can't control the tempo, the Thunderbirds will have a long ball game. LaBelle Steven, rebound it, no good. It's a one and done, yes. It's a last touch by one of the Thunderbird players there. As Gowett, number two from MSJ, coming in for the Thunderbirds, and Marmillo, I believe, is from MAU. Also in the basketball game. It's a very warm gym. That's, I have, I have two complaints because I complain about, I have to have something to complain about all the time. They got to turn the thermostat down in the gym. It's, it's way too, and the blocking ball called on Gowett before the shot, and the ball will go side out to the groove. Oh, my two complaints, just too hot, Jim, way too hot. And the parking, just brutal. I parked in West Rutland and walked up. And I'm not really exaggerating, I, I mean, Got to have a better practice situation here. That will bounce around and it will be saved. The step to the hole, the shot pull up, and no. That came out on Griffith. I'm not sure why it didn't happen for her. And we're going to follow college Gowett getting inside the two group players. And they got a hold of her, and that will be the call. There's no pressure in the backcourt as Bagley will receive the pass from Gowett. Bagley calling the play out. She drives high to the hole, goes high off the glass, and again, I like that personally. She's got the speed and the strength to take the ball inside like that. Up, and no, had to wait for the second bounce. Flannery down on the floor, and jump ball. Collins going to stay down here with the groove as Flannery got on the floor and tied up, I believe, Ethier of Proctor. 10-3, Thunderbirds down by seven, and they are going to allow the substitution to take place for the groove. I just need a jersey number. They only have the numbers on the back. And there's number 15, Cummings. Tori Cummings in the ballgame. A well, great position and drew the fall. Yeah. Yeah, she was able to. She set up high on the parks, came down inside, and got the pass. And Flannery will step to the line and followed in the act of shooting. So obviously getting two shots. And with 11 minutes even to go on the first half clock. Larry will flick it in there and get the bounce and get a second shot here. And same results, hit the front of the rim, muscle it up and over and we'll make it 12 to three. Bagley, got the play from the sideline, makes the call and Marmolo. To Pembroke and she got stuffed jump ball as that was a good defensive play by Ferraro. Now we'll go Thunderbird basketball down on the baseline. And I'm just looking, Ray has come back in the ball game and Ray will more than likely run the point now that she's back in the game. And got a travel call on a kick out pass and a turnover. And it'll be side out and that would be Ray right there, and she's looking for and finding the touch-up to get the ball back. 
as that was Cummings who came back, number 15, to make the touch. Oh, nice cross over. Lex to go outside, and no. Uh, well, almost one of those situations, if you watch that play again, that she would have been better off to finish off the drive to the hole. Bagley behind the back, got the ball open, and over to Marmillo. And I'm looking where Ethier is, not trying to post her up yet. Pembroke also in the ball game. Bagley, pump fake down inside, takes the dribble, waits for the screen. Ethier sets it up, and Bagley front rimmed it. Very patient play, but a very one-dimensional play. Ten minutes to go in the first half. They'll dump the ball inside, and great finish by the groove. Push the lead to 11 now at 14-3. Again, they had nobody roll to the hole. And really nowhere to go with the ball after Bagley had killed the dribble. Gawet, finding Marmolo. Yeah, and that's set up on the run. A little contact there, no foul called, and the shot short, and Ray with the basketball. So Allie Ray. Polanski, who's had a big first half out there, and Gowett fights through the groove and gets the steal, and then the ball stolen back. That's in play, picked up, and Cummings was fouled, I believe. Or a jump ball, but there is Gowett. Yeah, so, so the foul called on Marmillo, and the ball goes out of bounds on the side to the groove with 9.06 to go. in the first half of play. See Rago behind her back. Nice help defense by Gowett, and that forced the travel as Gowett stepped up to help Bagley. And it'll be Thunderbird basketball side out. Oh, it's been a very big struggle offensively here for the Thunderbirds U16 squad and Bagley. You want to dump the ball inside the ether. She'll take the contact, yeah. Nice step to the hole. They'll wave the basket off. And I believe it's going to be on the floor prior to the shot. And the ball will be sent out of bounds on the baseline to the Thunderbridge U16 squad. Gawet will give, be given the duties of taking the ball out of bounds. And nice grab. And then Cummings stop the ball from coming in any lower. No good. And now the push by Ray from the point in the orange uniform. You see, Groove are finding their groove right now. They're up by 11, 14 to 3. Down inside around the hands. Ethier will come up with the steal and then get the ball back to Bagley along the baseline on the pass. Both got wet and Bagley were there, and the ball ends up in the hands of Bagley. Ray. All the way in the corner, nice catch on the elbow. Marmillo up and no. I like it though, she took a shot well within her range and just didn't get the hoop to cooperate with her. At the midway point of the first half and the orange started hot, or the group started hot, they're wearing orange and they have just been hot. To the hole, up and got it. That was Landry with the uh, nice little 10 foot shot. As they search for those combinations, Emma Lyle at the scores table being ready to check in for Green Mountain, or she's from Green Mountain High School, getting ready to check in for the Thunderbirds. Bagley, again, good choice, just didn't drop. Rebounds are one and done as the defensive board is being controlled by the groove right now, and they will bring the ball up. And that should be a offensive foul call as Gawet standing there will take one for the team. I just cannot see the jersey number on the young lady that committed the foul. As that is, okay, number 20, and she turns her back to me. That is Jesse Best. And so, stuck on three for a long time. You know, it's been the Thunderbridge U16 squad. Gowett up and no. 
Good look, front rim that she can hit those shots, just not that one. And Ray got best on the run, up and no. Tell you what, they run the floor very well, this groove team does. Hard to the floor as Gowett will get up. She'll be all right. Ray out on the floor, she's all right. It'll be Gowett taking the ball out of bounds with Bagley in the backcourt. And there hasn't been any pressure extended by either side and into the backcourt. 6.40 to go in the first half. The Thunderbird AAU Tournament 2010. Got Gowett off the screen. Got it up. No good. Rebound. Lyle was there as Burden got it. Burden from Mill River. There's a bucket. Marmillo with the her first basket. Makes it 16 to 5 now. Is it Groove with the lead? Oh, this thing long way from being over. They look to dump the ball inside. That option taken away. They brought it back to Cummings down to the elbow. There's the contact. I'll tell you what I like about the Groove. They play very clean, but they play very physical. And basketball is a physical sport, a contact sport. Marmillo with the steal. The hands of Bagley. She's put a lot of minutes in already, Bagley has, and this is a very warm gym. Up and no. It was a tough catch on the pass. Oh, there's Lyle. See, I think Lyle, and I've seen Lyle play a lot. Lyle should be put up in the low post. They should just be pumping the ball down inside to her because I don't see a good matchup there. I think that would be the best matchup for the Thunderbirds right now. Way outside, no good. 16-7, Emma Lyle will get the rebound, give it off to Gowett. Back to Bagley. I'm not coaching. I'm just saying I watched Lyle play, and she can go inside and be a force. Foul on the drive as Marmolo will take it to the hole and draw the foul and get two shots. I think that's more suited basketball that we've seen the last two times down the floor with the inside low post move by Emma Lyle and then right there with the penetration down inside the paint by Marmolo. And they've injected this offense a little life now. This lead down to nine at 16 to seven, 508 to go. First half action. As Flannery back in the ball game four. The groove along with Ferraro. Flannery number four in orange and Ferraro number 33 in orange. Second shot up and will not get either one to drop. Ferraro will chase it down in the corner and on the dribble, take the one bounce, give it back to Flannery. And Flannery right up the gut, crosses the timeline and will dump the ball down inside. Klodzki got held before the shot, no good. Wouldn't count it anyway, she didn't make it, but no shots either coming up. Ball go on the baseline out of bounds, and that looks like Ray going to take the ball out of bounds. It is Ray, number 31. Catch the shot, the lefty, no good. Glonsky up, got it stuffed, and got the ball back and stayed with it, and made the basket. The first shot was blocked by Lyle. And that's just sticking with it. 18-7, down by 11 are the Thunderbirds. And yeah, they killed the dribble way up high, and all the rest of the offense is way down low. And I don't know, I just believe in real old-fashioned fundamental ball. Push, you got a player like Lyle, push the ball down inside to her. Until they shut you down, then you can start taking those outside shots. Look at the quick hands by LaBelle Stevens. Then she'll save the ball to Lyle up ahead to Burden, and she'll cross over. She wants the right-handed shot, and she got fouled, and she's going to the line, and Ray will collect the foul, number 31. Yeah, and so Burden from Mill River. Trying to get in the scoring column herself. No, they're 0 for 3 from the line, the last three free throws. And she'll just refocus, coil, and extend and get it. Lead down to 10 now. So the Thunderbirds, really, in the second half of this opening half of play, have settled down now and are playing much better. Just weren't ready, I guess, when they stepped onto the floor earlier. 
Landry waits for the screen and never really developed for. There's the wing, the cut coming in, and the finish down inside by Ferraro. Very good job when the defense slid over to stop the penetration down the middle of the floor. They just came in off the wing. Bagley carried the basketball. Yeah, and she knew it. Slide out. Yeah, and it looks like it's going to be Ferraro and Flannery back there to take the ball out of bounds. Flannery, who started the game off, looks so impressive. Got quite a rest on the bench back in there now. Ferraro looking to dump the ball inside. Never really developed a passing lane. Flodsky fouled on the drive. Yeah, on the baseline blocking foul called on. Thunderbirds and the groove will take it out of bounds on the baseline. Say, so look, there's the catch, the step inside up, and tell you, that's a strong finish by Griffith as she beat three defenders for the Thunderbirds there. 22 to 8. Thunderbirds got a little work at them here. As Marmolo with a good grab. And the pass tipped around. It was intended for Lyle coming back up top. It bounces all over the place. And the groove, Flannery, got it. Oh, what great body control by Flannery to stop and take the shot. We're going to have a Thunderbird timeout as we're down 20 foot to go in the first half of play. Timeout. As they'd started to close ground and lost a whole bunch. of down by 16 now. Burden up and tell you. That's a nice job making space down inside for herself. It just couldn't get the finish on the shot. Ball got a bounce last touch by the Thunderbirds. Ferraro and Flannery in the backcourt for the groove. And this is Flannery bringing the ball up the floor with no press in front of her. Ferraro, ball fake, got the defender to buy it, took it to the hole, and look at that finish. Down below the free throw line. Able to get the layup to drop and then pushes the lead out to 26 to eight. The groove. And boy, again, it's not a lot of motion on that offense. There's one player moving, and that, that just really gives the defense not a lot to have to key on. Up, and Klotsky with the finish. Big first half here for the groove as they push the lead to eight at 28 to eight. The pass to the corner, LaBelle Stevens. Uh, see where Burden caught the ball. That was a tough spot to make an offensive play. She'll go to the floor, and Kolodsky had it, lost it, and it will be last touched by Burden, they say, so it'll become the groove basketball. As some new bodies coming in here for the Thunderbirds, I can see that one of them is Knowles from Proctor, Colleen Knowles from Proctor, and I've got to find number seven, Abby Hurwitz. So Hurwitz in the game for the first time. Ferraro. See the defense, the triangle come down on it. Oh, and they just give it off in the wing. And I tell you, it doesn't hurt when you got people shooting the basket while making those shots also. I believe that was Landry that made the shot. Again, they were looking to get the pass. Lavelle Steven will go out of bounds and another turnover. That's the official counting people on the court. And he's happy, so Cummings now is going to bring the ball down this trip, number 15, and this is her first time of running the point. Then they go to that spread offense and got a whistle on the play, and I missed the call, but it's going to go over to the Thunderbirds. We need a tremendously strong finish here with a minute 15 to go down in the first half, down 30 to 8. Oh, no lead's insurmountable, but... That's pretty impressive. Look up there and see just eight points on the board. What a defensive effort by the Groove. I'm not, you know, I'm not taking anything away from the Groove. They've played a good defensive effort, but they've also played a very cold offense right now. LaBelle Steven, up, oh, no good. Lyle, she'll take it right back up. She's looking to kick it out, and now she will. She'll get the flint to LaBelle Steven, and Lyle, there's the kick out. Shot by Flint, no good. Front rim to. Flint will chase it down and <clears throat> save the ball to her teammate on that side, which was Abella Steven. And see Flint call the play out, and then she'll bring it back to the left side, just above the elbow. And Klonsik with the steal will get the finish up, and no. 
And there's the foul on Kalonsik. <clears throat> and all that taking place with 23 seconds to go in the first half of play. I waiting for the sub to come in for Kalonsik who picked up her third foul, I believe. But a good move to take her out with just 23 seconds to go. Not, try not to let her pick up her, her fourth foul as her what's make the grab. And find LaBelle Steven three ball on it and got it. That's a couple threes for LaBelle Stevens. Four seconds, three seconds, two seconds. This will count. It's up and no. So the Thunderbirds will go to the half down by 19, 30 to 11 in U16 action on Munger Vision from the Thunderbird Tournament 2010. As you can see, the group will have the basketball to get the second half underway, and they have Ray with the ball, and she's going to bring it into Flannery, and that's been a very dynamic backcourt. Just observation says that offense has struggled so bad for the Thunderbirds. Everything was up high on it, and you do, you do, you know, if you've got, you've got some good low post players that you've recruited, the ball's got to go. You can have a high post or a high ran offense, but you've got to bring the ball down inside and let it filter through the low post to bring it up high. But we'll see what adjustments everybody made. Three ball, no good. Rebound controlled by the orange, by the groove, and we'll come on the side, and Kalodzki pump fakes twice, had the shot blocked from behind. I believe it was LaBelle Steven. This is Ferraro up as she fights through, I don't know, three or four different bodies down there, and last touch by the Thunderbirds. Ball go out of bounds on the baseline, and throw basket to the groove. This is the AAU Basketball Tournament 2010. You see Flannery trying to work off the screen. Then they released on the roll. Landry didn't get the ball back. This is Ferraro up and blocked from behind. I believe it was Pembroke. That was blocked by Lyle, and then she controls the basketball. A little fire in the Thunderbirds' eyes on the defensive end as they had a couple blocks that time, and they held a nice defensive stop there. Armillo to Lyle. She was, again, up high. Pembroke will slide over, the defense will collapse around her, and then Bagley will pick up the loose ball, go baseline, take the running one-hander. It'll be short, and the ball on the floor. Picked up by the groove, and then handed off Kolodsky down long distance to Flannery. She'll step back, and no, front rim did. It's a one and done as Pembroke with the rebound. We'll give it off to Chelsea Bagley. Same score we had at the half, 30-11. to 11, The groove with the lead over the Thunderbirds. I don't know who's got the food, but I can certainly smell food. Good food, hot food, cooking food. I haven't eaten since breakfast. Lyle, look at that. Oh, nice move, didn't get the finish. Got to let her shoot more. She's from Green Mountain, Union High School. Like I said, Dr. Close, or Dr. Close, Dr. Bugiani. I got the wrong profession. One's a dentist, one's a podiatrist. <clears throat> I don't know what I'm thinking of Bob Cloge. I haven't, I haven't seen him in years. But uh, <laughs> Dr. Bujani and family put tremendous as Marmolo will make the three-point shot. Puts a tremendous amount of effort and resources into these, this tournament every year, and it's a huge tournament. It's quite a boost to the economy in the area also. I think the Chamber of Commerce would recognize events like this and give the Doc a little recognition. Oh, nice job. Drew the defense, kicked the ball over, and then the easy put up by Landry. And so Bagley and company find themselves down by 18, 32, 14. Lyle with the catch, and boy, they had overloaded the floor, and there's a jump ball call. They had the whole floor overloaded, and so LaBelle Steven was open on the weak side, and they just couldn't see her and couldn't get her to the ball. LaBelle Steven with a couple three-pointers in the ball game today. They have had a jump ball since the opening possession, yes. And it will be all-orange basketball, yep. So the groove with the ball, and this is Allie Ray. Almost had the dribble taken away from her, and then the recovery. Flannery up and got it. Three-pointer for Flannery. Yeah, and tell you, all that energy that uh, the Thunderbirds came out with, they haven't made a dent in the difference in the scoring. And again, they just, not the players, it's just the, the offensive set they have as they dribbled into 
the defense got tied up. They will keep a possession of the ball on the arrow this time. So the next jump ball situation will go to the groove. Nice catch by Pembroke, and then she'll rip the ball. I give it to Bagley, she'll swing it over to Marmillo, looking for another three. Nope. Long rebound off the long shot, and here comes the groove. You see that Ray with the crossover. Had the ball knocked away, and here comes the Thunderbirds U16 squad. They need a spark here. They need to make a couple baskets in a row. There's the roll, Lyle with the grab, and there you go. There you go, low offense. Offense down in close. 35-16, the groove, Ferraro with the ball. Oh, she had a good head of steam, and that almost went for her. And she's gonna be shooting two off the miss on the drive, got very creative with the shot. And there'll be a lot more of the Bujani Thunderbird Tournament on Channel 15. You can also go to pegtv.com, click the website, video on demand, and watch the games on the internet for free. As Gowett coming in for Marmillo for the Thunderbirds. Like I said, I believe Marmillo's from Bennington from MAU, so you have an MAU, you have an MSJ coming in for an MAU if you want to play the alphabet game. She'll miss the second shot. Lyle with good position with her body. Got the rebound into the hands of LaBelle Steven and then back to Bagley. And there's Lyle with the grab and the give and go. Back to Bagley. Jump ball. Yeah, that was well defended as they just brought two defenders in from the wing, collapsed down the paint. and Really just a good read. You have to anticipate that the way that the groove did to make that defensive play. And they were able to do it. 36-16, groove with the lead, groove with the ball. It's Flannery, who has been a good looking player out there. Will bring the ball up and they go down inside. There's the up under and the Ferraro got it. Boy, they had the pass whipped along the baseline and it's makes your shooting percentage look fantastic when you're taking shots two feet from the basket or layups. And that's just what we're watching this groove team do as they put the lead down to the largest margin at 38-16. Flannery slapped the ball and kept it in play, and Flannery will give the up in the center of the floor. And there's a foul coming from behind, yep. There's, that was, well, I'm looking to see who that number was. I think it was best number 20 that ran the break with Flannery. The foul was called on Gowett. And Ferraro will take the ball out of bounds. And that was blocked right back into the hands of the groove, and. Ferraro trying to get go duck up underneath. Lyle had it, and it ricochets off from just about everybody on the floor. Flannery will pick it up and push it into the front court, get to the floor, lose control of it, squirt the pass off, and Best had the touch. This is going to be from way outside. No good shot taken by Griffith. Bagley with the rebound as things got a little chaotic there for the last minute and a half on the floor for both teams. And so with 10 and a half minutes to go in the basketball game, the Thunderbirds need to put together a run here of seven, eight, nine points. And then it would still be a big deficit, but again, the, the winner of this tournament is determined by how many games you win, by the margin of victory and, and things like that. So points scored. So it's very important in a bigger picture, not only to win, but you have to win a certain way. Get as much out of a win as you can in the whole formula of determining the championship. Bagley's three-point shot, no good, and Gowett will chase down that weak side rebound and had the ball slapped out of her hands by Kowalski. Do you smell food? Ah, <laughs> so it has been confirmed, I do smell food, so. Proctor Girls varsity coach Chris Hughes here taking any action. Got wet from way outside, got it. Oh, with a defender, I believe it was Flannery right in her face. Got wet, just smoked it. 38-19 on that shot by Got wet, and she's able to knock the ball away, hands the ball off the bag, actually it rolled into Bagley's hand, and she's able to pick it up. And 
and Ethier. She's stuck into the game. I missed that. Ethier down low missed the shot. I like Ethier and Lyle in the ballgame at the same time for the Thunderbirds. See if they utilize that to keep them both down low. Flannery feeling it, no good. And that's what we picked up by Lyle, and she'll take the dribble herself and break into the front court. Lyle, keep it going. Yeah, she's going to be a good college player. She'd be a nice fit for a school the size of Castleton. But I mean, I have no idea where she's going. I'm just, I'm just thinking, she's a good athlete. She's a very good student. And so Flannery's going to take a breather. Knowles will come in for Lyle for the Thunderbirds. And I think it was Cummings that came in for the groove as Gowett will get it up to Knowles. She'll regather the ball. She's going to flip it off to LaBelle. Stephen had the ball knocked away, stolen, and then we had a foul called on the play as the play trying to break up and out. And it'll be the groove side out, and it'll be Landry taking the ball out of bounds, number 12. She'll be joined by Best in the backcourt, and that's Best with the basketball now, number 20 in orange. Bagley getting set in defensive posture to pick her up, and Best able to get by her, and that was the key to it. Balance on defense, and that's what she didn't have right there. Is she was leaning in, trying to knock the ball away. That's why Best was able to accelerate past her. So Kalodzic will leave the game and sit down, and Allie Ray, 31, will come back into the contest now for the groove. You know, Bright orange uniforms. Like I said, they had tie-dye warm-ups with a peace sign on it. Oh, nice save by Griffith. The shot up and got it. Again, look where she shot the ball from. Point blank range. 40 to 19. Lead back to 21 now. As Gowett to Bagley. Everything ran from up high. LaBelle Steven looking to go for her third three. No good. Long rebound. LaBelle Steven got a piece of it. Ball stayed alive. Ethier knocked the ball away, and it will be off from Ethier out of bounds. And so Ray will get the ball in, and then the touch up by her teammate on that side, Landry. The screen set, and Ray's pass was not tipped, and it'll be out of bounds. They were looking for Griffith. And just a little bit too much height, a little bit too much mustard on the pass, and we'll have a turnover. And just 21 seconds away from the midway point of the second half. And Bagley and company. Again, no lead is insurmountable, but just the way the game has unfolded, you got to figure the Thunderbirds U16 squad Needs a run here pretty quick. <clears throat> As Flint has come into the ballgame, also number 11 in white for the Thunderbirds. Up and good by Landry. Chelsea Landry with yet another basket. You know, it's been pretty even scoring for uh, the groove. It does seem a lot like I'm talking about Flannery, but other than that, I mean, they've got a lot of contributors to put the ball in the hole. Flint. On the dribble, got to the elbow, gave the ball back to Bagley between the circles and to the free throw line no further. And well, you can tell you, Gowett looked, thought about shooting up another three, but for some reason decided not to. Bagley crosses over, up, and no, can't roll it in. The rebound ended up with Cummings, and now touch, and the ball will go back from Best into the hands of Ray, and she'll cross the timeline. Best slicing her way through and trying to foul. Be Ethier called for the blocking foul. And that was just a nifty little slide through move. And shots will come out of it for Jesse Best. And she'll get nothing but net on that one. Pushes the lead now to 43-19 with the group. And nope, set on the rim, wouldn't go. Griffith with the rebound will give it back to Bess. It's a hard pass handle, she'll go up and get it. Well, I'll tell you, everything working well for the groove. Set of the two points off the free throw, they got the one free throw and then the 
Rebound and the putback, so they got a three point trip. They got a plus one out of that. Flint to Bagley, stops, wants to drop the ball down inside the ETH here. She'll go up and get it again. Down in close. Ray and company really have spread the ball around nicely. And they played excellent defense, the Groove have. As Cummings lost her bounce, Bagley will be called for the travel. Yeah, she was okay until she rolled over, and then that will be the travel. Good effort, good hustle. But a good call by Pat Whalen. To Ethier defensively out there in the corner, and she should almost slap the ball away. Gowett timed it. Gowett will go to the floor, and a good scramble. Cummings up, got it. Boy. A torrid shooting percentage here as uh, the groove almost at 50 points, but still 5.52 to go in the basketball game. Flint holds, waited for Ethier to flash, didn't really give her the option to get the ball to her. She's created a pass lane both times she's rotated around the paint. Bagley on the run, got it, count it. Chelsea Bagley. We'll get the and one after the made basket. Again, like I said, from Mill River, Chelsea Bagley. Puts it up and no. Griffith got the rebound, immediately will find Ray. As Flannery remains on the bench for the groove as they've got this game pretty much under control right now by 24 points. And I believe Ethier will pick up the foul as they post it up Landry. And that will be the call. And that will be two shots coming up for Landry. As they step to the line. And it's two shots. So the Amato and Hurwitz will have to wait at the scores table for the second shot before they can enter the ball game. And that shot a little bit too strong as it goes off the back of the rim. And now Hurwitz and Amato in the ballgame for Knowles and for Gowett. Yeah, so Landry up with the second shot. No. Amato off the bench, making an impact, will get the rebound. That's going to be tipped out of bounds by Best, and it'll be Thunderbird basketball. Best stayed back on the play and disrupted the outlet pass. And again, oh, we're looking at a 1-3-1 one, one zone right now by the groove as they change up. And Ethier from outside, too long, too strong. And the rebound, Amato able to get it along the baseline. Will turn to the hole, and no. Nice move. Just couldn't kiss it off the glass and in. And now there's a body on the floor, and the whistle will blow. And, and that will be on Ethier, the foul. And I believe it was best that was fouled, and it is. And she's up, and she's okay. And we must be over the limit. Yeah, we're coming down. Not we, I'm not going to do it, but the groove coming down to shoot some free throws now. And it's going to be best taking the free throws as that is the seventh team foul on the Thunderbirds. As Burden, number 25 in weight, is coming for the Thunderbirds and she's replaced Ethier, number 18 out there. So that'll be front rim, no good. And the offensive rebound to the groove and the second shot, no good. Burton did a good job getting tough on the boards. We'll take the dribbles and try to find an open portion of the court. We'll find Bagley. And the Thunderbird's gonna call a timeout with 4.41 to go in the ball game, down 47 to 23 to the groove. I'm just looking, checking, they're coming back with the same lineup after that timeout. Actually, I think they have to come back with that same lineup after that timeout. Bagley wanted to go baseline and the ball was slapped away. It's going to stay with Thunderbirds. Bagley up, short, no good. Long shot, long rebound. Bagley able to race to the loose ball and get it. Hurwitz pulled down the shot and this will be up and good by Flint. Her first points of the basketball game just inside that three point arc. So it's a two point shot. 
and a chant of defense goes up off the Thunderbirds bench. Coming spins, gives the ball back to Bess. She'll penetrate, put the shot up, no good. Amato able to get a piece of the ball, keep the rebound alive, got it to Flint. She'll break the timeline now and get the pass off to Bagley. That 1-3-1 one, one zone still being employed out there by the Groove. Hurwitz and a nice save by Bagley in the corner. Amato to the hole, no. Burden had it, lost it, and it'll be Bess coming out of the pile with it, and she'll give it back to Ray, and it'll be Ray bringing the ball up the floor with three and a half minutes to go in the basketball game. And I'm not really in doubt who's going to win this contest. Hurwitz with the push. Hurwitz with Burden down the floor. Numbers aren't there, and she'll wait for the trailer. She killed the dribble, and it'll be Bagley with the ball now. And Bagley coming out as Cummings came out the defender. They throw it across on that 1-3-1. One, one. Flint shot, no good. And then trying to follow up the rebound. It'll be taken out there by Griffith, and she'll hand the ball off to Ray. Only two team fouls on the groove. Again, they've been very fluid out there. Ray will spin away from Bagley, and... The ball fake, and then the block by Bagley. The ball ends up in the hands of Ray of the groove, and they want to go baseline. That's sealed off that time between Flint and Amato. Shot up and got it. Three-point shot by Griffith. That will put him at 50 now, at 50 to 25. So it's a 25-point lead with 2.15 to go in the basketball game. Flanton with a defender right in her face and not able to get the shot off Amato. Great pass, and the shot won't go. It was a nice job getting the ball down inside. And now, Ray walking it up. There's no shot clock to worry about. She'll spin, go to the left hand, and almost get that thing to go out the window and in. Burden had it, lost the ball on the floor. Scramble for the basketball. Bagley will pick it up, take the bump, and Put it on the floor herself now and make the long pass to Hurwitz. She'll go to the hole and too strong. And Ray literally just wrestled the ball away from Hurwitz. He wanted to wrap the pass around and no good. Maybe we get in the hands of Landry. And now best with the grab and they'll just reset the offense with a minute 17 to go in the basketball game. Ray rolls to the hole and tough shot. Foul to called on Bagley. Now that's a very creative shot there. She almost had too bad an angle to even take the shot, but able to get it cranked up. And so Allie Ray, number 31, at the line. That's the eighth team foul. She was following the action. She's obviously two shots and just 68 seconds to go in the ball game. She'll roll that in for the 51st point of the contest. Ray's second shot, a little short. And she ends up with the tipped rebound back into her hands. And Griffith will hold at the elbow. They'll just pull it out and recycle the offense up now. Man to man, defense being played out there by the Thunderbirds. Shot missed. Griffith gets her own rebound. She wanted to kick the ball back to Cummings, stolen away by Bagley. Up ahead to Burden. Nice job of reaching up and slowing the pass down. And then it's Ray with the steal. That's best with the steal. Now Ray with the basketball. And just good ball handling skills out there by those groove players. Best over the top. And you see that the nice job of avoiding the travel by putting the ball on the floor. And then best with the shot. No. 20 seconds to go. Burden will get the basketball off the back. And they got a chance here for another bucket before the ball game ends. Hurwitz stops at the elbow. We'll give it back to Bagley. 11 seconds go. Amato turns, fires. It'll be a two-point shot if it goes. Didn't happen, and now Amato will chase down the loose ball. Three seconds, two seconds, and shot up, and no good. So it'll be a 51-25 groove win in U16 basketball over the Thunderbirds.